So yeah, this story had consequence, or this song had consequences, um, good ones that I really enjoyed. But in 2020, it seemed like the post office, the United, the USPS, um, was coming under attack from all directions, and it was under the gun. Um, and I found myself more defensive of it than I would have imagined. And I always have romanticized the post office, and I knew the name of my carrier growing up and all that stuff, and I always thought it was a really respectable position. And so I wrote this song in defense of the USPS, and then I started to think about the story I would tell uh, when shows started happening again in 2021. And I thought, well, let me use the lyrics in some kind of an official government form. And so I used the lyrics on a cover letter to be on an application to be a carrier in uh, Aurora, the second biggest post office in the state, thinking that my, I thought that if you used a poem as a cover letter, you were automatically disqualified unless you were applying to be a poet, which this certainly was not. But it got me the job, and I felt like it would be un-American to turn it down, and that I had to, I mean, it was 2020, right? I didn't have anything else going on. Um, so I, I, I delivered mail for Aurora for uh, 14 months because of this song. I got this hat out of it, too. This is called The Talking USPS Blues. Remember Benjamin Franklin, or John Prine, Abraham Lincoln, or this cousin of mine? They all made an honest living working for the U.S. mail. Now for Pony Express preschool me, my first recollection of the post office be the mailman bringing them Christmas catalogs. Yeah, and up through the years they were always on time, a model of consistency and national pride authorized by the U.S. Constitution. But I add, Columbia House meant endless CDs, publishers clearing, lottery dreams, and what's that magazine for dad wrapped up in plastic? Postcards, report cards, the birthday cards from grandma. Oh yeah, get it done if you want to send something to someone you love. Way over yonder just to stay in touch, you can do it through the U.S. mail. Then you graduate to professional stress and get your very own address. Mailbox, envelopes, packing tape and stamps. And it starts to feel a little more like home when you see that familiar uniform walking up the drive with all your stuff. And through rain, snow, cold and heat, and the gloom of night, and tired feet, always with a smile they deliver. Yeah, but more than sentimental, it's a functional necessity, bedrock for a country claiming such legitimacy. It's a messenger of sympathy, a promoter of peace and goodwill among men and nations. I talk to each now, wee wee, if you want to send something overseas. A pen pal letter, a wheel of cheese, you can do it through the U.S. mail. In 2006, what the president did is sign into law an act that exists solely for the deliberate sabotage of a perfectly good public institution. It's called the Post Office Accountability Act. It's an arbitrary mandate revenue tax that says they gotta pay like way in advance 50 years worth of health and benefit plans. So now their p and red and they can't invest and they're way in debt into the public eye. Well, it's a pretty good mess and right for the picking of the private sector scavengers. And then 2020 hit and tried to break its back, but the postal worker said, you can forget all that. We got a job to do, so get out of the way, and we'll show you what makes America great. We say, good try, no, no, and you gotta stay home, but you still wanna vote. Maybe even save the world as we know it. You can do it through the U.S. mail. We did it through the U.S. mail. Long live the U.S. mail. And all the postal workers, too.